The following is a dramatic, loose retelling of events. You can't prove anything. G.K. Chesterton once said, an adventure is only an inconvenience rightly considered. An inconvenience is only an adventure wrongly considered. I don't know who G.K. Chesterton is, but I know I've had some pretty inconvenient adventures, so I know he said at least one smart thing. That's me, Emma. I don't know if I have as many smart things to say as G.K. Chesterton, but I do have a little adventure I can tell you about. Our story starts in Paris. Wait. No, it doesn't. Shit. I never bought a postcard from Warsaw. Our story starts in Warsaw. Everybody's favorite part. Amazing. We're doing amazing. Today, my company had a meeting with- In case a weird amount of people decide to watch my YouTube channel again, I've decided to omit any specifics about my job. All you really need to know is it makes a lot more sense for me than being a preschool English teacher. And now I'm throwing all the shit that I own in a suitcase because in about 30 minutes I need to get in an Uber to the airport to go to Cannes, France for the Cannes Film Festival. And isn't life just crazy? I moved to Poland to teach English. Isn't life just crazy? Can I be honest though? I kind of knew this was going to happen. The only videos I really took in Cannes were for my Instagram stories. Because are you really traveling Europe if you don't make every effort to let everyone who knows you see that you're having a fabulous, glamorous time that they could only ever achieve in their wildest dreams? Exactly. To be fair, Cannes was pretty much a dream come true for me. Walking along the beach to work every morning after a breakfast of croissants and coming so close to Tom Cruise I nearly converted to Scientology. It was everything I could have imagined, and more. But then it all went wrong. I'm gonna need this to tell this story. Um. So basically, we went to Cannes for a couple days, then we had a meeting in the middle of the week. So we flew back to Warsaw for the meeting that next morning. Then we would fly back to Cannes straight after the meeting. But that morning, I couldn't find my passport. I called the airport and when they connected me to the right department, they hung up on me, like three times at least. That's what I get for not studying Polish hard enough. I make it to the meeting, it was a success, but the work was just beginning. <laughs> Our flight was in an hour and I had no travel documents, so I ran to the US Embassy, which was about five blocks away. First, I actually had to stop at the photo place next door to get new passport photos taken, which actually turned out pretty well given the circumstances. At the embassy, they took my phone at the door and I just begged for a temporary passport that would allow me to go back to France and continue living my Cannes Film Festival dreams. The woman at the office told me that if I were to submit an application for a temporary passport, they would have to invalidate my old passport, which I didn't care, I couldn't find it anyway. So I said, yes, just get me a passport. Huge mistake. Literally moments after stamping the application that says that my old passport is no longer valid, the woman at the desk looks at me and says, wait, this won't work. This won't get you into France. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what do you mean they won't let me into France? She says, this is a temporary passport. France is one of the only countries in the European Union that does not accept temporary passports as a valid travel document without a visa. So I'm like, oh my God, awesome. <laughs> what can I do then? My flight's in an hour. I I have to go. And she says the only thing that I can do is to go to the French embassy and see if they will give me a visa. And she's like, yeah, but they're not gonna do that. They won't, they won't do that for you. And I was like, okay, but that's all I can do? Uh, okay, this is my only chance. And so I run again. So I'm heading in the direction of the French embassy, which is several more blocks away. And my phone finally turns on. And I have about 10 missed calls from my boss who is saying that they got a hold of the airport and they found my passport at customs. But it didn't matter because now my passport was invalid. I wasn't even halfway to the French embassy at this point and we're running out of time. So I'm like, whatever, I just have to try, I guess. We go to the airport to pick up my old passport to see if it's like marked invalid or anything. Like maybe something got lost in translation and they didn't get the message through. So maybe it's okay, I don't know. While we're waiting in line, I get a call from the US embassy and she's like, hey, 
are you coming back? Like, what are you doing? And I was like, hey girl, uh, actually they found my passport. So like problem solved. And she's like, okay, but it's invalid. And I was like, oh my God. And then I don't know what happened. Like my cell reception just like cut out and I just couldn't hear her. So I took my passport and I got on the plane and everyone at the airport looked at it and they were like, looks good to me. So I got on that flight and I went back to Cannes. So my southern France dream continued. Oh my god, no. Until it was time to come back to reality. Okay, completely unrelated to all of the passport stuff, toward the end of the film festival I got some personal news that meant that I needed to go back to the US as soon as possible. And not only that, but with the timing of everything, I was only going to be there for like another month anyway. So. It didn't make sense to buy a round trip ticket. So I needed to pack up my entire life and leave Warsaw in a couple days. Unfortunately, this meant another trip to the US Embassy where the lady looked at me and said, huh, so you didn't travel this weekend? And I was like, no, I'm so sorry. I got so busy. I had this thing and that's why I need to go back to the US, so like I'm gonna need that temporary passport now, actually. So this time she invalidated it for real. She put a hole punch through my passport and I got my temporary document after all of that, finally. So that was good enough to get me home and then I did it. I packed up my whole life and I headed back to the US. This was part of the plan anyway. It was just happening a little bit sooner than planned. I thought that I was going to move to Texas with my sister like a month after that, but I was just home early. So I was hanging out with my family, doing my thing. And then I get a call from my boss and they're like, hey, there's this thing in Paris and you have to be there. And I was like, hey, do you remember the part where I can't go to France on a temporary passport? I spent so much time trying to figure out the rules and if there were a way that I could get a visa for this work trip, I called every embassy, every consulate, everyone who I could think of and no one could tell me if I was actually allowed to go to France on a temporary passport or if I could get a visa. No one could tell me anything. Like, oh my God, I swear to God, I tried so hard. They're mysterious people. I don't know. Cause traveling within the Schengen zone is pretty chill. So we're like, okay, I'll go to Warsaw first and then we'll just see if they let me into France, I guess. Only problem is I live in St. Louis. That's not the only problem. Actually, there are a lot of problems here, but one of the problems is I live in St. Louis and all the best flights to Warsaw are from Chicago. Bitch, I must be fully dissociated because to act like it's normal to just be chilling here right now and just holding on to a prayer that I can enter the European Union in about seven hours. Am I okay? It is a lovely day though, so worst case scenario, I've gotten some exercise dragging this suitcase around this entire city and I got to see some nice views. I still really hope I get to go to Paris though, damn. I wrote an essay my senior year about wanting to travel the world. So that's so dope that it's actually happening to me, but also just the way that things have gone this past month, I don't know when I'm gonna mentally process all of it. Like my body is moving faster than my mind can keep up. And I'm kind of worried that I'm headed for a breakdown. I hope that's not foreshadowing. I'm just so tired that I can't even, when I am finally resting, like right now, I don't even want to think about everything that's going on. Breaking news, I decided, why would I have a mental breakdown? My life is just awesome. That's okay. Let your life be awesome, if it is. I don't know, that's my advice for the day. After that profound bit of introspection, I headed to the Chicago airport where I waited for a few more hours. One several hour international flight later, and I finally arrived in the Paris land. I feel
feel it's important to mention that I was fully prepared to be stuck on multiple occasions. I was prepared for someone to tell me, hey, you can't fly with this passport. Hey, do you have a visa? Hey, this is an awesome passport photo. And no one seemed to have a problem with my passport. Actually, the lady in the US as I was taking off was like, wow, I've never seen a passport like this. I was like, oh, really? Like I'm sweating and she just goes, cool and waves me along. I don't know if it was a glitch in the matrix or if this woman at the embassy just lied to me that you can't go to France with a temporary passport. I don't know. But what was I gonna do as they're like waving me onto the plane? Am I gonna be like, oh, are you sure? Are you sure I'm allowed to go? Show me your fake passport. It's not fake. It's okay. <laughs> Come on. Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. We had a little wine with our dinner. <laughs> um, today, <laughs> yes, today guys. we snuck into Paris. Uh, who is this distinguished woman? Whoever you are. No, it's not the girl with the food towers. I made it. For the second time in a month, I had successfully snuck into France. I think. Again, it's very unclear to me what the rules actually are. While I try to figure that out, enjoy a nice little montage of my week in Paris. Mm. We should get one of those. Like. <laughs> That's gonna be stupid. There she is. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I still don't understand the rules, but whether I actually did anything wrong or not, I can say that it feels a lot cooler to be in Paris when you spent so much time worrying that they weren't gonna let you in. one night in my old bed in Warsaw, which I can't do anymore because my old roommates have since replaced me. And then it was finally time to move to Texas with my sister. But not without just one more inconvenience. It would just have to end this way, like truly. I took a train on my way to Chicago last time, but there weren't any trains on the way back. I had to take a Greyhound bus. I already have some PTSD from Greyhound buses because the last time I took one, I bought a ticket in college to see the guy I was dating. We broke up, but the ticket was non-refundable. So I used it to go visit some friends. Couldn't find the station, was crying, thinking I was gonna miss it. When I finally get on the bus, a woman steals my wallet and I find out that she's just been buying Taco Bell in Michigan like a week later on my credit card. So I've had some bad times on Greyhound buses already. So I'm leaving from Chicago at like 11 p.m., something like that. And then it's 3 a.m., I'm in some other city, I don't even remember, Louisville, that'd be stupid. Indianapolis, I don't know. I'm in some random city at a stop at like 3 a.m. in this bus station. The bus is late, so I've been standing here for like an hour. I didn't feel the safest. And then of course, this guy walks into the bus station holding a massive boom box. He comes up to me and he's like, hey girl. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Hey. I just couldn't help but notice you because you know you're so like tall and just like right there. Girl, you're so right there. I couldn't help but notice you. Are you? Oh my god. He's like, what's up, girl? I'm just Sebe. I was like, are you lying to me? He goes, yeah, you're the first person who's ever called me on that. I was like, I know for damn sure, beside the point. So he's just chit chatting while I'm fearing for my life, and he goes, Yo, you wanna hear me freestyle? This man 
turns on his boom box at 3 a.m. in this bus station, surrounded by other people, hanging me out to fucking dry, bro. Just ignoring the whole situation. He starts playing a beat on his boom box and starts freestyle rapping, staring me dead in the eyes. Ah! Grooving along, just doing what I have to do so I don't get shot or something, I don't know. Wow, that's pretty good. He just keeps going. And I look over and I see this guy like standing in the vicinity, kind of like looking over. So I'm thinking, oh my God, maybe he can like save me from this. So I look over at him and I'm like, it's pretty good, right? <laughs> the guy goes, I swear to God. Yeah, I'm a rapper too. You gotta be kidding me. This man comes over from where he was standing and these two men right in front of me start to rap battle. I'm being dead ass serious, dude. So after the absolute trauma that they've both just put me through, my man Giuseppe looks at me and goes, yo, could you cash at me for my bars? So finally the bus comes, we're on our way back to St. Louis. I wake up at like 7 a.m. to the bus driver asking if anyone knows how to get to the bus station. I'm just jet lagged out of my mind. Yeah, left on spurs right here. I go up and sit next to the bus driver and I have to guide her to the bus station. Ah! I've been here a couple times recently. <laughs> I was hoping there was somebody else, but I was like, I kind of know where I'm going. <laughs> and that, I guess that's the end of our story. Wow, what a shit show, am I right? <laughs> so then I spent two days hanging out with my parents, repacking my entire life up, and then I finally moved down to Texas to live with my sister for the summer. But that is a story for another time. So stay tuned and don't call French customs on me in the meantime. Thanks for watching. Love you, bye.